How's it going everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Chain Baker and today's video has been a long time coming. We're making brioche by hand, so let's go to the kitchen and have a closer look. I always thought that making brioche by hand is pretty much impossible and that is why so far it was the only recipe on my channel that required a mixer, but I just could not leave it like that. So here we are, a fully hand mixed brioche. 30% butter, 50% eggs, now that is a proper rich dough right here. It's not the easiest thing to make, but if you don't own a mixer, then it's well worth it. My main concern with this has always been temperature control. I don't know about you, but my hands are warm. They're really warm. Because this dough contains so much fat and eggs, it takes a long time to knead. Even with a mixer, it takes around 25 minutes. Naturally, I assume they'll take even longer by hand. But as we'll find out later on in the video, that is not the case. Now the chain definitely has to come off for this one. This thing rattling around for 25 minutes would just annoy me. The ingredients are pretty much the same as in my regular brioche recipe. Flour, eggs, water, sugar, yeast, salt and butter. The only change is that I reduced the butter by 10%. Temperature control is of utmost importance here. All the ingredients must be stone cold. I actually froze the flour in the freezer. The eggs are cold as well. I left them in the fridge, they're around 4 degrees Celsius. And of course I chilled down the water. And just as in the regular brioche recipe, we're using cold butter. If you don't chill down your ingredients, you will fail, trust me. You could even chill down your mixing bowl to keep the temperature in check. Now with the ground rules out of the way, let's start preparing the butter. This needs to be cold, but pliable. It needs to be soft so we can add it into the dough. And to make it soft and pliable, we'll simply press it between two sheets of parchment paper. A rolling pin is the best tool for the job here. It may be a little bit hard to begin with, but it'll get softer as you roll it. We'll put it in the fridge for now. It will set slightly, but because it's so flat, it'll get softer quicker once we take it out. Now we can move on making the dough. And there's no special methods here. We're simply going to mix all the ingredients. So grab a large bowl, add the eggs, the yeast, the salt, the sugar, add the water and give it all a good mix. We want to dissolve the salt and sugar and hydrate the yeast before adding the flour. Mix until you don't feel any more sugar scraping against the bottom of the bowl. Now we can add the flour, grab our scraper and mix this to a dough. We want to mix it in the bowl until there's no more dry flour left. And if the scraper's not doing the job, continue on by hand and pop the dough out on the table and we can start kneading it. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to check the temperature now. And as you can see, it's already gone up to around 9 degrees Celsius. Remember that all the ingredients were colder than this. That temperature increase comes just from mixing the liquid around in the bowl. So you can see why it's so important to keep your ingredients cold. Now let me tell you this though at the moment, it is quite tough. You're gonna have to pop a can of elbow grease for this one. We have to knead it like this by pressing it against the table for around 10 minutes. And it will get quite sticky along the way. So once in a while, stop and scrape up the mess and continue kneading. All the eggs and sugar inhibit gluten formation. And that's why it takes longer to knead this dough. But don't get discouraged. Just keep kneading it, keep working it and keep scraping it up and continue. Now, if you're a bit of a germaphobe, you might not want to do this, but when the dough starts sticking to my hands, I just rub it off and add it back into the dough bowl. I wash my hands thoroughly before making my bread, so it's no problem. Now, getting close to the 10 minute mark, the dough has become a lot less sticky. I mean, it's still sticky, don't get me wrong, but it's not like it was before. It is quite manageable now. I'm going to knead it just a few more times to make sure that it's nice and cohesive, and then we can start adding butter. At this point, the dough will still tear quite easily but we're not finished yet. And before we move on to adding the butter, let's just quickly take the temperature and see the difference. And as you can see, after around 10 minutes of kneading, it's gone up by 14 degrees Celsius. Now, if we added room temperature butter to this, the final temperature of the dough would be way too warm. The cold butter is what saves this recipe. To incorporate the butter, I'm going to use the same method as always. Stretch the dough out, then place the butter on it, fold the dough around it, and then squish it in. There's nothing special here, just brute force. Fold the dough around the butter, seal it in, then pick it up and start pressing it together. Really force the butter into the dough. This is called tearing in the fat. And you want to keep doing this for around a minute. And if you find it easy, you can place the dough down on the table and press it against the table. Once you feel that the butter is kind of incorporated, scrape it all up. And now we're going to continue with a different kneading method. This is the stretch and fold. And here's how it works. You pick the dough up by one side, turn it 90 degrees, stretch it against the table towards yourself and fold it over forwards. Stretch and fold. 
in the beginning, it will stick to your hands, it will stick to the table. So just as before, scrape it up once in a while and continue kneading. I can assure you that this part is far easier than the first 10 minutes of mixing. Once you get a nice rhythm going, it's quite therapeutic and relaxing. Now we really need to develop the gluten. And that's why this part takes around 15 minutes. Now it may sound like a long time, and perhaps it is in bread terms. But like I said, it's very easy. And next thing you know, your brioche dough is ready. I mean, look at that. It's nice and smooth, super soft. I would call this a big success. And it's well worth the effort. There's only one question left. What's the temperature of this dough? Now, because we use cold butter and because the stretch and fold method does not warm up the dough too much, we've hit the nail right on the head. Around 25 to 26 degrees Celsius is perfect for this dough. And from now on, it's just a regular brioche method. Pop it in the fridge for one hour to chill down. I can get my chain back on. It sure felt weird making bread without this. Now after the first hour of chilling, we can take the dough out and give it a fold. Folding serves a couple of purposes. It helps with cooling down the dough. The outside is cooled down, but the middle is still warm. So by folding, we are distributing that temperature evenly throughout the dough. Folding will also increase tension in the dough. Because we mix it by hand and it contains a lot of butter, sugar and eggs, the dough is quite loose. And folding is a way of adding strength to the dough. It'll help it rise more vertically instead of spreading out sideways. And if you want to see a detailed video about folding, check out the episode in my Steps of Baking playlist. This dough can go back into the bowl, we'll cover it up and pop it in the fridge for another hour. And after the second hour of chilling, you can decide what to do. You can either leave it whole and use everything for one project, or you can do what I do and divide it in half and make a couple of different breads. And there's plenty to choose from in my brioche playlist. You can use this dough for any of the recipes there. If you're gonna keep it whole and use it for one project, you can just keep this in the fridge and skip the fold. But if you want to use it for a couple of projects, then weigh it first and divide it in half. There are so many different breads you can make with brioche. It's the most versatile dough ever. I even made some brioche steam buns the other day. And there will be, of course, a video on that too. Okay, so after dividing, we need to shape these into balls again. Flatten the dough, make sure all the little scraps and bits are on top, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until the reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up again and tighten it against the table. That's your dough ball done. This step is just the same as the fold that we did earlier. I would definitely suggest using cling film to wrap these up instead of placing them in a box because the surface might go too dry. And don't wrap them too tight because they will expand as they ferment in the fridge. If the dough explodes out of the cling film, the exposed surface will go dry. You gotta keep your balls safe. Now these can go into the fridge for up to 24 hours. There have been times where I left it in the fridge for 48 hours and it was still perfectly usable and fine. Well here we are, it's the next day, as you can see the dough has popped up quite well. And from this point, you can use it for whatever you like. There are dozens of different breads you could make. The main purpose of this video for me was to show that it's possible to make this dough by hand. So I'm just gonna make some burger buns with it. What you do with your brioche is totally up to you. But if you also want to make burger buns, then take one dough ball and divide it into four, then pre-shape it. It's the same as earlier. Make sure all the scraps and little bits are on the top of the dough, Flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle to reach point where it started. Flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, pick it up, pinch the seam together, that's your dough ball done. The pre-shaping step is just there to make everything nice and uniform. Now we can cover the dough balls up, let them rest for around 30 minutes. This will give time for the gluten to relax and also the dough balls will warm up slightly, making them easier to shape. Now we can do the final shaping. Take a dough ball, place it on the table with the smooth side down. Then flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle to reach point where it started. And you know the rest. Flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, pinch the seam together, that's your dough ball done. And if the first one wasn't right, you got three more to practice on. The final proofing of this dough can take a long time, around four to five hours. But you don't have to let it ferment for so long. Just leave it in a warmer area and it'll rise more rapidly. I had loads of time on my hands, so I just left them at room temperature. During the final hour of fermentation, preheat your oven, 160 degrees Celsius fan on, and that is 320 degrees Fahrenheit for my American friends. And look at that, they're puffed up beautifully. They have definitely more than double in size, that's exactly what you want. It will give them a quick egg yolk and water glaze. This will give them a rich dark brown color and make them nice and shiny. And it will also act as glue for sticking down the sesame seeds. Now if you're not into seeds, then just leave them plain. If you'd like to try out a different kind of glaze, 
then check out my glazing video where I compare 15 different glazes for bread dough. Now for burger buns of this size, they'll take around 25 minutes of baking. You can turn the tray around halfway through the bake to give them a nice even crust. And there you have it, big beautiful golden brown buns. And this is how you make proper brioche by hand. And you could even bump up the butter to 40% if you wanted to. But this is pretty good too, I mean look at that texture. So what do you think of this recipe? Have you made brioche by hand? Let me know down in the comments. See more brioche projects? Click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.